Spurs are a bit threadbare, it's fair to say, but Aston Villa took full advantage of that. And say it quietly, they move into the top four. What, what does that mean, man? I mean, it's a great performance, first of all, right? Yeah, don't say it quietly. Say it from the rooftops, mate. Let people know. <laughs> Aston Villa are here and we are competing in that top four. That, that's the aim. And I think this result goes a long way towards pushing us towards that. We know how imperious Aston Villa have been at home this season. But the big away days, we've, we've struggled slightly. Obviously, we had the heavy loss to Newcastle on the opening day of the season. Liverpool, obviously, we lost to Anfield. So we needed a statement win away from home and three-point lane, as it's becoming known to us, <laughs> we have provided that. It, it's excellent for, for the Villa to get this win. Moving above Tottenham in the league, who many kind of have been clamouring over this season. Obviously, Pasta Cogley won manager of the month for the first three months of the season, which, yes, they've done well, but come on, let's be honest. He's, he's nowhere near as good as Unai Emery. And it's it's phenomenal seeing the development of, of his side. And this game was a, a massive statement for that. Well, I think it was fascinating tactically to see two managers play what's been billed as the battle of the high lines. I think many of us expected <laughs> to see the game played in the centre circle pretty much. But joking aside, Dave, it was an impressively executed high line from Villa that kind of almost won it in some ways because the amount of time Spurs got caught offside I believe was a record for a Premier League game. Goals disallowed, obviously, for that as well. The execution of that defensive strictness was was kind of key, really, to this game plan coming off for Villa, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely evidence of uh, Villa improving their high line and their structure in defence. We, we saw it early on in the season, there were times where they did get caught out. Um, on the break, we saw it against Forest recently as well in their game where they obviously dropped um, points. And But there looks like it's starting to click a little bit more consistently now. And obviously we saw a hat-trick of goals from Son, disallowed goals at that. But you're right, to be honest, they really contained Spurs. I think they had to ride a little bit of wave of pressure in that, that first sort of 35-40 minutes where... Spurs really were in the ascendancy and looked full of confidence, you know, even without all the players that they're missing, actually did really well. It, it looked like they'd yeah. be the more likely to, to kind of go on. But um, impressively, Villa held out and were able to sort of, you know, hold on in that pressure, in that time of pressure. And they actually got a goal at a pivotal time and it really just swung the momentum completely. Villa looked the more likely then to, you know, to really grow into the game, which they did do. Yeah, that mm-hmm. goal as well from Paul Torres, Miles, as, as Dave was saying, like the, the timing of it was perfect. But I kind of mm-hmm. think that they were knocking on the door anyway. They had a goal fractionally disallowed for offside from Ollie Watkins. And he was yeah. always getting in those positions, wasn't he? His positional play was superb mm-hmm. in this game. But yeah, that header mm-hmm. from Paul Torres, crucial timing and probably the momentum builder for going into the second half as well. Yeah, you absolutely need that because... Dave is right. Spurs were definitely on top in that first half. And there were a few things that just upset their rhythm. Obviously, the Spurs fans are massively aggrieved by the Matty Cash challenge on Bentancur. Mm. Never a red for me. Very clear yellow card. And it's unfortunate the player goes off injured. But I think that disrupted the flow of Spurs in the first half quite heavily. And then, obviously, the goal just before half time is, is massive. And it shows the quality we've got from set pieces. Because, OK, Tottenham are missing their centre-backs which you'd imagine would try and deal with a, a ball into the box like that. But it's inch perfect from Douglas Louise. Like, it's absolutely fantastic. And Torres does very well to finish it. But it, it was just a sign of how well-organised Villa are, how prepared they are for everything. Like, you mentioned that high line. The amount of people that are saying Spurs are unlucky because Son had three goals disallowed for offside. It's not bad luck. That's just excellent defending. It shows a Villa defensive line who are resilient and willing to hold that high line and are really organised in doing it. Here's a stat for you. Since Unai Emery came in at Aston Villa, Liverpool are the second highest team in the Premier League for catching their opponent offside. They've done it 98 times. Yeah? Wow. Aston Villa are top of that with 168 It's a really deliberate play. That's not a fluke. It's not unlucky for Spurs. It's just methodical defending from Aston Villa. And I think the fact that we are able to implement that so well at the back means we're also quite prepared for how to tackle that going forward. And, okay, Watkins has one disallowed because his toenail was off in the first half. And that is a shame. But then if you look, the free kick was a perfect example. We're aware of where that defensive line is going to sit and we know how to counter that. And that's excellent from us. Like the fact that we are able to turn our own strength in defence into a tactic when we're attacking 
Superb, yeah. It just shows that, yes, Postacoglu is doing a good job at Tottenham and, of course, he was hamstrung by injuries in this game. But there's a difference between a man-manager and a tactician and we know which one Emery is. Absolutely. Mm. In fact, he's probably both, if we're totally honest. The improvement of some of these players is huge and there's a few more we could talk about today, I guess. Even things like kind of the subs that was made at the right yeah. time when players were on yellows and you could sense that, yeah, they were kind of treading a tightrope here, like Matty Cash, like you say. Mm-hmm. I feel like all of that was part of this tactical discussion and decision that Emery's getting right frequently now, you know? And this mm-hmm. game is a big game for Spurs, for Spurs and for Villa. And he got mm-hmm. it spot on. D- despite, you know, a real onslaught from Spurs at times, they stayed mm-hmm. resolute and made those decisions, those right calls at the right time. That's really encouraging. Absolutely. And that's why we'll be in this sort of position come the end of the season as well, because the depth of this squad and the way Emery's managing it is fantastic. Spurs fans can complain all they like about the amount of injuries they had. Let's not forget, we've got Tyrone Mings out for the season. Emi Buendia, who was our record signing not long ago, out for the season. Ramsey and Moreno have been out for most of the season. They were our left-hand side last season. So we faced that too. But all of a sudden, we've built a really strong squad and we're getting the best out of players. You look at Leon Bailey. Leon Bailey's got more goal contributions per 90 minutes than anyone in the Premier League so far this season. That's outstanding for considering where he was last year. The impact he's able to have off the bench is, is superb. And he looked brilliant again in this game when he came on. Yuri Tielemans is finally getting some match fitness and he's starting to click with the, the team. That pass for Watkins, for Watkins' goal, is just superb. Yeah. And the way he's able to kind of pick that penetrating pass in the final third, Villa needs someone that can do that because... A lot of the time, you've got Louise dropping a bit deeper to dictate the play. McGinn's very direct and running with the ball. But having Tielemans as that extra option who can find the ball in to get Watkins behind the defensive line, that's huge. So the fact that we've got some of these players returning to fitness, we've got a squad with that kind of depth. Yes, there's areas we still need to address. And I think that will be done in January now that we're kind of seeing our league position. But Emery's managing the squad superbly. And OK, Depending on how deep we go into Europe, that might start to affect us throughout the season compared to a team like Spurs who don't have European football. I don't know. I just I just feel so confident with the way that Emery's t- tackling these kind of problems. And it'll be interesting to see where we're in three weeks because all right, we've got Bournemouth away next. Have to win that game. Absolutely have to. And then it's City and Arsenal at home. That's huge. We've finally taken points off someone that you'd say is a rival for the top four. Absolutely. I think Arsenal City will probably pull away from us by the end of the season. But at this stage, yeah, you've got to show that you're competing at that level. So who knows? There'll be two massive games for us coming up. Yeah, huge. Dave, I don't know how much of a level head Miles could keep off. I ask about top four <laughs> chances long term. So I'll ask you instead, because the top four actually is wide open in terms of the points gap between first and even sort of United in sixth. It feels like touching distance still. Um Form team of the league, obviously. Yeah, agree. Um, but Villa are two <laughs> points off the top. You know, one point off champions Man City. And as Miles was saying, if the games against those big teams go their way, dare we even think about top four, let alone a title challenge, Dave? Or is that optimistic even for Miles? <laughs> I think a title challenge is a bit much to ask, and I think definitely a bit too much soon. Um, I, I think Villa fans, you, you know, they're ecstatic with the way they play and their progression, you know, ever since Gerard left is nothing short of unbelievable, really. Um, I think what is especially important is that they actually get a lot of their players who have got off to so put these in, uh, knocks and injuries up and get back fit because I think they are a little bit short, especially in the attacking areas at the minute. Obviously, Zan- Zaniolo just picked up that injury. They can get Ramsey back. You know, the kind of form that he was in before he got injured was... You know, he was getting tired for England and he was definitely making a case for himself there. So mm. if they can get these players back fit um, and give them more options in the squad because, you know, the, the fixture list is just so congest- congested and it's going to get, you know, even more ridiculous than we, we know it is at Christ- around Christmas time. So um, certainly if they if they can make a case for that top four, top five, you know, a position there, then they'll be over the moon with that. 